Hi, I'm Clint Miller with Midwest Computech. I'm our Chief Solutions Officer, and I appreciate that you're visiting our website or some of our digital resources on YouTube today. You're probably here because you may have received one of our postcards, either our security postcard uh, concerning school and how safe is your school data, or maybe you're one of our business clients and you've gotten our Strengthen Your Operations postcard um, and partnering with our certified team. Um, but either way, we're very proud of our organization and we're so happy that you're here spending a little bit of time with us. This video uh, will try to capture some of the current security issues today. Um, and we hope that we'll be giving you some pointers for the future. Um, again, my name is Clint Miller. I'm the Chief Solutions Officer at Midwest Computech. And we want to talk to you today a little bit about our company and hopefully we'll give you some tips on how to make your organization safe. Um, Midwest Computech was founded in 1982. Um, a little bit about our history. We started out as a small typewriter firm in the center of the United States in mid-Missouri. We worked with a lot of schools, government agencies, and businesses at the time. And over the years, we built our business into a strong certified team of individuals that serves the state of Missouri and beyond. Um, but we're a dedicated IT services firm. We have our own data center uh, that's a military grade hardened data center right here in Missouri. Uh, we back those up off site and out of state in co-location data centers to make sure your data is safe. Um, we have over 35 years. We're actually um, celebrating our 40th year in service um, and we've got the strongest best certified team we've ever had um, and so um, we hope that we can have an opportunity to work with your organization um, and if not we hope that you learned something today from our presentation uh, what we'll cover today we'll talk about critical IT security threats we'll talk about network security best practices and steps you can take to protect your organization. So with about approximately a million cyber attacks uh, and growing uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, cybersecurity is a real concern in businesses. In the past, we just cared about, a lot of organizations just cared about having their IT person on site uh, that was able to service their computers that was able to take care of their network if they had an issue. But the reality today is not one individual can take care of everything. It's hard to be a cybersecurity expert and also an IT support expert. That's why we've got a vast amount of resources at Midwest Computech that can help you through many, many different areas of your technology. And when we partner with an organization, we feel it's really important to have all those bases covered and we do a great job here at Midwest Computech with our certified team. Uh, one thing to know is two and three organizations fall victim to a cyber attack and that's according to Sophos. They're one of the biggest largest manufacturers of devices and firewalls and content filters and they also do advanced threat management and a whole number of other things in the cybersecurity space. We're very proud to partner with Sophos, um, but it's interesting that two and three organizations fall victim to cyber crime. Nine and ten of those are running up to date cybersecurity at the time of the most sig significant attack. So, as a business owner or as a school executive, an administrator, or an administrator of a local government, you're probably thinking at this point, what can we do to remain safe? And we hope this presentation can be a valuable resource to you to get you started and to help you launch into the next phase of your protection at your organization. 
And at any time along the way, we're here to help you. It's real easy to contact us. Just go out to MidwestCompuTech.com and click the Get Help Now button. You can also email us at solutions at MidwestCompuTech.com. Visit us on the website or call me personally at 573-499-6928. My name, again, Clint Miller. So one thing that we've heard over the years is nobody would bother to hack us. Um, unfortunately, organizations that don't believe they could be a target for cybercrime are really the, the biggest low-hanging fruit folks out there. Um, oftentimes they have poor security or no security or they just have bits and pieces of it. And with the current cyber landscape and all the criminal activity taking place, you really need to have a broad, vast amount of different solutions in place that's going to protect your organization, school district, local city government, or your manufacturing plant. So why don't you hear more about cyber attacks locally? Uh, we hear big government cyber attacks, we hear some things on the news, but we don't always hear locally what's going on. Many of the victims just don't report the incident because they don't even know they've been hacked. Sometimes we've seen in our organization, an organization may be um, compromised a month or so early and with a lot of the criminal activity and the intelligence that they use, maybe bots are injected into your systems and they're, you know, scraping information out of your system until you really notice attack later that could be a significant um, problem at your organization. Um, sometimes organizations don't report problems because it promotes bad public relations and they want to avoid those. And then of course legal ramifications, lawsuits, and a host of other problems come with reporting the attack um, we always say uh, contact your insurance company, contact your IT support firm or your person on site that's responsible for those and start working uh, towards notifying your clients if you have been involved in one of these attacks. But the biggest issue that we see out there in the marketplace is complacency. Please don't underestimate the importance of addressing and protecting your organization from threats. Today we're going to cover some of those biggest threats to your organization right now and how you can protect yourself. This video is going to also give you a list of things that we feel that you can hit the ground running with some high quality information and uh, you can start implementing some of the solutions that we recommend here at Midwest Computech. Shadow IT. This is an area that a lot of organizations overlook. <clears throat> um, these are often cloud applications that maybe your employees are using. Could be a free Gmail type Google Drive, uh, which Google has a, a business class solution. They also have the free solution. And Oftentimes we click accept as we're signing up for these services and don't read the fine print. The reality is, is if you're not policing these kind of applications in your organization, you could have widespread data sprawl uh, from not only within your organization, but outside of your organization where documents, information, personal things are being shared and um, saved on an unprotected cloud. Um, we don't want to pick on any particular people. Obviously we know um, Dropbox had some issues uh, years back. I think you know most of these organizations are addressing things and are fixing things but we really want you to be aware of what your employees might be using. Cyber thugs aren't your only threat. Actually what about your employees? What are they doing? Even good employees can make mistakes. They may delete a file. 
They may click on a phishing email, um, which is from a cyber criminal. When you click on it, it may um, deploy ransomware throughout your organization. A number of bad things could happen. But these employees and staff members are just innocently doing their jobs. Um, but sometimes they, they're not aware that they shouldn't be using these applications, and we want to help you with that. Um, again, they may be using free and unsecured file sharing applications, like a free Dropbox account or Gmail account or a number of other free options. Um, it might be time to get some training for your employees. We can help with that at Midwest Computech. This free video is a great start to help your staff and employees uh, with some of those challenges. Uh, but we can also schedule um, a video conference with your employees or we can come at your location and help you out um, and sit down and really have a workshop and a conversation with your team. Um, with ransomware is one of the most challenging things. Again. We've worked with Sophos very closely. Um, we appreciate their help and some of this presentation material and the rise of inter enterprise ransomware is a really big thing right now. Um, enterprise ransomware is targeted really at medium to large size organizations. And so <clears throat> some of those differences out there that we can talk about is traditional ransomware typically targets a smaller organization in each attack. It's an automated fire and forget type of um, a cyber attack and it spreads to as many machines as possible. It's not particularly timed and, and a good example of this might be the WannaCry uh, ransomware virus that you may have heard about um, a year or so back. Enterprise ransomware is a little different. It targets medium to large size organizations. And you might think, well, we're not large or not even really sure if we're medium. But if you're a local school district, even small school districts may have as many as 200 students or even 50 student school districts, all the way up to many, many thousand students um, and staff members. Those organizations would be considered medium to large. Even almost any school district would fall into that. Many, 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 many city governments are going to fall into that because you're dealing with um, not only your staff, but also patron information and, and other information that would be um, a nice catch uh, for a cyber criminal. And even your smaller size organizations within your local town, like your bank, local bank, an independent bank, maybe a small manufacturing plant, all these type of organizations can oftentimes fold into the enterprise ransomware targeting. Some of these targets uh, are a manual attack. They're more calculated. They're controlled. They're deploying these with administrative tools. They're very sophisticated and they're timed for maximum impact. Uh, they want to completely disrupt your business uh, and your operations at your organization and just destroy that. And then they can uh, come back to you and require a ransom be paid uh, to unlock your files. Uh, and trust me, we've seen lots and lots of these problems out there, and they generally don't get fixed in a day or two. They generally drag on if you don't have the right solutions in place, and they can disrupt or completely destroy an organization. We've seen businesses go out of business um, through these kind of attacks. So it's very, very important to think about these things and partner with a team that's going to be able to help guide you through this process. Um, some of the best practices we're going to go over um, to stop enterprise ransomware attacks. Number one, lock down remote management. Um, a lot of times, and we just recently saw uh, a local organization be attacked because they opened up one of their firewall ports for a security contractor that was targeted 
on an enterprise ransomware attack and then that problem spread um, through that organization and since they had a connection uh, to a to the uh, victim organization it also spread through them so it's important to lock down have your IT team or give us a call and we can check your firewall and how it's set up and just to make sure that folks don't have access that they don't need they may need um, you know short time access or short term access to log in and get into a system to um, do something with their security system or something with your HVAC but that shouldn't be permanent access you should allow them to come in if needed under a very um, calculated timing and also um, very coordinated with your IT uh, team or resources as to when they're going to come in and when their work is over that you're going to lock down that remote management that they may have. Uh, very, very critical to back up regularly and keep a recent copy off site. The old days of having a thumb drive or a tape drive or the little USB, um, yeah, like I said, a thumb drive or an external hard drive, the little black boxes about the size of your phone uh, that connect uh, to your USB. A lot of times we see those fail. Uh, Windows backups don't run properly or uh, you don't get that backup or the device doesn't get taken home and then you have a problem at your organization, maybe a lightning strike occurs or a fire, water damage, or a cyber attack, and that uh, same USB device may still be connected to your server or that very important desktop that keeps your financials on there, and uh, all that data gets lost, and we've seen it time and time again. So it's very important to partner with a company that's gonna provide a good disaster recovery backup solution for you that's not only backing up locally at your um, location but it's also being shipped off to co-location data centers uh, that are off-site and even out of state. Uh, monitoring your network 24-7 will get alerts if a server's down or there's been a problem or someone tries to attack a server or one of your network resources or your main network switch falls offline you're going to want to monitor those things 24 7 because you're going to be able to tell a lot uh, by what activity is going on um, so those that's a very key point we can help you with that other IT professionals can help you with that and hopefully if you have your own internal tech team they can help you with that the big, big thing here is to educate your workforce. Always make sure that your workforce is educated. And that doesn't mean one class, one year, and then sit and forget. That means a constant education of a team like the Midwest Computech security team coming out, educating your employees, doing this presentation in person, answering those questions that maybe they're challenged with. Maybe we're doing uh, quarterly or monthly phishing, uh, fish threat testing. That's where we send harmless emails to your team and we see how they respond to those emails. And then we sit down and have a conversation if they're having some challenges or continuing to click on attachments and things like that or going out to websites where there could be a problem. But educating your workforce and continually educating them uh, to become better, to be able to spot these problems, to spot these cyber attacks and threats is mission critical for your organization to be safe. Once a writer was asked what kind of writing pays the most and her agent answered, that's a ransom note. That's really what's going on these days. With ransomware, it's a sophisticated attack. It's much, much easier to get a lot of money from an organization than to target individuals like you and I. Uh, the ransomware can go out, it can really disrupt and destroy your organization, 
and it can cost a lot, lot of money. Hundreds of thousands of dollars, billions of dollars have been spent on ransom uh, where to get that data back. I think the average is somewhere between one and three hundred thousand that an organization's going to spend to pay that ransom. So if you can stop it before it gets to you, we can help you with that. BYOD, that's bring your own device. Uh, lots of organizations, school districts, local governments are um, encouraging the use of uh, bringing your own device, and that's great. Um, the biggest thing with bring your own device is if that device is lost or so stolen and the data is not encrypted and it has your specific important data on it, what happens? That could be a big problem. Uh, what sem sensitive information could be on somebody's personal device? Any, say, passwords, websites, um, you know, company resources somebody might have access to, a whole host of different things. So it's very important that you have an acceptable use policy and you partner with Midwest Computech or, or work with your IT professional to get that uh, put into place. Um, so when you do uh, open up the doors for a bring your own device policy and maybe you're already there that you're doing it safely. Spam. Spam is terrible. As we all know, I think it drives all of us nuts. I can open my uh, a personal, you know, I've got a free Gmail account. About every time I open that thing, there's 20 emails in there. I don't know who they're from or where they're coming from. When I go to work, it's a much different experience. We've got the sophisticated software and the proper solutions in place that mitigate spam. Spam is one of the areas where you're getting a lot of junk emails and some of those even look like credible emails but they could have an attachment or something inside of that email that's going to disrupt and terrorize your organization. Maybe it's a ransom uh, where uh, program that runs when somebody clicks on it. We've seen fourth grade teachers, bank officers, a number of people at manufacturing plants and other organizations throughout our state and others that accidentally click on something um, as a result of getting spam email. So um, it's important to mitigate spam emails and we can help you with that. So how do you protect your organization and yourself? Um, going to go with the government and talk a little bit here. NIST, N-I-S-T dot gov, has a cybersecurity link here that I've shared. <coughs> NIST is um, a branch that the National Institute of Standards and Technology, and NIST does a number of different measurements. You can jump out on the NIST dot gov website. Uh, but there's a lot of useful documents on cybersecurity and best practices. And you can also see the NIST cybersecurity framework. So I wanted to provide this resource for you because we are Midwest Computech. You may think we have some biases. We probably do have some biases um, because we're really, really good at what we do. And we've really uh, worked with a lot of different organizations. But this is an is a government organization that you can kind of spot check some of our practices or your IT person's practices to make sure uh, that your organization's staying safe. Uh, three main areas of the NIST framework are the core desired cybersecurity outcomes. Uh, you're going to organi organize those in a hierarchy um, and uh, we can work with you to provide that detailed guidance. Uh, profile, profiles, alignments, uh, your organization and the required objectives that you're trying to meet and what your risk appetite is, how much risk you're willing to take on and then third the implementation tiers uh, which is measuring your organization's cybersecurity risks and the management practices of those. Um, so you can kind of see the framework there on the um, the um, 
image. Um, Nest also describes um, those desired outcomes uh, understandable by anyone. So anyone that picks up that document that you're working through can understand that, uh, can know your plan and how you deal with cyber security. Um, and it applies to all the risks and you're going to define the entire scope of cybersecurity and then you're going to be covering both prevention and reaction. So disaster planning, do you have a plan in place? That's one of the first uh, questions we're going to ask a, a new uh, organization that we're working with and we're going to ask you that on this conference call today. Uh, where should you start? Uh, if you don't have a plan, well, performing a risk assessment is very, very important. Uh, I would work with a third party on that. Um, I lead uh, both this organization. I also work on a local school board, um, and we have a lot of great people. Uh, Midwest Computech partners with the Division of Homeland Security that comes in and looks at our systems it's always good to have a third party come in and look at your systems and make sure that you're getting an outside perspective on how your setup and security is running. Document and store that plan where your team can find it. So as you're working through uh, with us, you're going to get a lot of scans, a lot of research. We're going to come back to you with recommendations. We're going to start working through a plan with you. Uh, we're going to want uh, your team to be involved in that plan so that, um, you know, if you're the one listening to this and you're sick or out on vacation for a few weeks, that somebody else in your organization can pick up that plan and hit the ground running. Um, I, as always, we're going to implement an off-site secure data backup um, for protection in case of a breach or a natural disaster or a number of different things. On the risk assessment side, again, partner with a consultant, get an outside perspective and a guide through the process. Um, determine what your recovery time would be in the event of a disaster. So how long is it going to take you to be up and running? How much is it going to disrupt your business operations? What are those key elements that you need to get up and running right away. Identify all threats that could potentially disrupt or destroy your operations and what the likelihood of those threats are. The likelihood of Missouri um, or the Midwest having a major lightning storm, thunderstorm that's going to fry equipment is probably even as high or higher of likelihood as a cyber attack. So we have to plan for those things. Do we have the right protections in place from a power management standpoint, from a, a power backup standpoint? Do we have generators in place? Do we have uh, redundancies in our data backups in place? Um, do we have those mission critical machines that maybe our bookkeeper is using uh, that not all that data is getting saved to a server in real time? Are those machines backed up? There's a number of things to consider. Um, and some of the risk assessment detail is defining those critical function system softwares, uh, listing them in a, in a spreadsheet. Who's your go-to for those? Somebody in your organization, somebody outside of your organization, like an IT support company. Uh, and then prioritizing all those above, which are mission critical, which are most important as you're developing your document. And then you're going to create that document that outlines your current IT infrastructure so that another person or company can come in and hit the ground running. You never know when a company might go out of business, when someone might get sick, when someone might quit and go to a new company. So it's important to have all of this uh, from your passwords all the way to your whole disaster plan documented out so that when somebody comes in, you can hand them a piece of paper and they can hit the ground running. 
then uh, finally we're going to talk about remote work um, are you uh, secure when you're doing remote work with the pandemic and a and uh, more and more of us working from home it's very important that uh, we're working safely when doing remote work and some of the key resources are identifying the devices and and, and what devices and what people are allowed to uh, be accessing with those devices um, to make sure they're not using a home PC to access your critical data server at your organization. Um, security for those cloud applications. If they are using a cloud application, does it have two-factor authentication? Um, it, that other method of um, authentication, not just the password, but also uh, approval uh, uh, from your cell phone or another method to ensure that you're the proper user logging in. And do you have backups? Keep in mind, even though you have a cloud solution, you still often want that solution backed up. Um, a good example might be if you had a if you had an issue with a ransomware attack, it spread through your Microsoft SharePoint. Is that data backed up to where um, if you've got to hit the ground running, it could take several days for Microsoft? Um, support to be able to help you so you want your local team to be able to help you and, and maybe get you going a little faster than some of these larger uh, organizations like a Microsoft or a Google that may take several days or even weeks to provide you support. Uh, make sure you have secured VPN VPNs, a virtual private network for users to connect to those servers that might be on premise in your systems. Um, again, we mentioned multi factor authentication. We use it every time we log in our computers here at work. It's very, very important. It's going to be a protection that's well worth the money. The cost is so minuscule and small to implement this um, compared to the cost of a major cyber breach. Um, and then a disaster recovery plan, not only a written plan, but also that what are you going to do if that data is encrypted or damaged? Do you have backups? Do you have co-location data centers backing up all your important data? So um, here's a list of things that we think you need. One, a written plan. Two, keep all your software up to date in all cases. A lot of problems can happen by having out-of-date software and firmware. Have next generation antivirus. That's the newest, latest, greatest antivirus. If you've got a question on what that is, uh, we'll be happy to answer that. Just email us at solutions at midwestcomputech.com or give us a call at 573-499-6928. Um, we talked about two-factor authentication. Uh, we think that's important part of your cyber plan. Spam filtering, content filtering, controlling what websites your people are able to access, forcing those passwords on a schedule so you're doing that routinely. Maybe it's three months, six months, every year at the most, um, and you're doing a 15-character password with a mix of caps, symbols, and numbers. Um, you're backing up your systems regularly and often. You're sending data off to co-location data centers. Um, and you may have a disaster recovery device on site, but at bare minimum, you've got a cloud solution that's backing up all your information. Uh, employee education has to be crystal clear. You, you really need to implement that and work with your team on a regular basis to have them educated on what to look for. Um, and our security team can help with that or your local provider uh, hopefully can. Lock down the ability for employees to use unauthorized devices to access your systems. We mentioned the home PC. Uh, just make sure any device that's logging into your system is protected and meets all the security protocols of your organization. And then that's it for our presentation today. 
can't ask questions when you're on YouTube uh, unless you just pop them in the comments below. Uh, but the best way to ask us a question is to email us at solutions at midwestcomputech.com or give us a call at 573-499-6928 or 660-826-4700. Again, I'm Clint Miller. I'm with Midwest Computech. We'd love to engage in a partnership with you. We'd love to talk to you a little bit more about your organization and what some of your security challenges and goals are and see if we could help. Thanks a whole lot. We'll talk to you soon.